going on, everybody? Welcome and thank you for tuning in to the first installment of Respectfully the Black Creative. Uh, this is a podcast where, you know, we, we talk about our experiences of being young, black, creative men. Um, with me, I have my brothers, I got Adrian over here to my left. What's up, y'all? I got Rashawn. Yo. And I got my boy Devin, who is all the way in Illinois right now. I don't know why. But... <laughs> <laughs> Shout out to my man. What's up, what's up, yo? What's up, bros? Um, and this is a this is a podcast where we talk about, um, <clears throat> you know, our life experiences, how we think and how we feel. And if, you know, if you don't really feel the same way or you have a problem with that, just take it up with your Lord respectfully. Respectfully, you heard. Yep. Yeah. Um, all right. So first, a congratulations is in order. I uh, want to congratulate my guy, our hey. brother, Rashawn and Erica. Oh, shoot. Hey. Newlyweds, you know. How's it feel? Congrats. How's it for y'all? You know? <laughs> 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 it's got a bell, though. Hey, hey, man, right. how, how, does, how does it feel to be? I ain't single no bro. Wedded, man. Bro, it feels amazing, bro. Amazing. Yeah. I mean, you know, everything with, with new levels also comes new challenges. You know what I'm saying? But, yeah. bro. The reward is, it's plenty, bro. It's was, amazing. Was the feeling everything that you thought it would be? Like being, I guess, going through the whole process of being married and then being married? Man, I would say it's beyond what I thought it would be, honestly. Yeah. I, I already, going into marriage, you know what I'm saying? Of course, everybody has their expectations of how things, how they feel things should be or how they want things to be, but... You know what I'm saying? It's it's important to like know that those expectations will be shattered and broken, but in a great way. You know what I'm saying? So it's just important to always. It, I I feel like it's important yeah. to always understand that you can you can grow. You know what I'm saying? There's growth, always room for growth. You know what I'm saying? That's what's up, man. Uh, yeah. You know, I think I had a. I felt like I had a nice wedding. Especially doing like COVID time, bro. Let me tell you, we we were scared, man. We were like, yo, I hope we're doing this as safe as possible. You know what I'm saying? Because yeah. we we wanted all our close friends and family to be there. Glad you guys were there too, man, bro. It turned out well, bro. Yeah, bro. I'm glad we can make it, bro. I shed a bro. tear that night, bro. I was like, my my boys were there, but I was like, bro, that's what I'm talking. About. I ain't gonna lie, I shed a tear too. Yeah, <laughs> when you guys were saying y'all vows, that's when the tear fell, yeah. bro. That <laughs> was very sweet. Man, talk about nervousness, boy. My goodness. Yeah, what got no me idea. was we started saying your vows to uh, to Bella. Was oh, like, yeah. Like, nope, Man, I come, almost. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> love that little girl so much, bro. I love her so much. Um, yeah, man. Congrats to you, man. Congrats to your new family, man, and your new beginnings, man. Hats off to you, bro. Thanks, bro. Yeah, Thanks, man. bro. We Appreciate love. it. All right, bro. We all we all love you, Dierka and Bella, uh, a lot, man. So happy for y'all. Yeah. Um. All right. So just staying on the topic of marriage, um, I kind of already seen how you and Dierka would interact before y'all got married, and like mm-hmm. how y'all would support each support each other as far as like creativity. Or did y'all have to explain to each other like, yo? We're creative people. We don't want to lose our creativity while we're still talking to each other. Man, that's, that conversation? A, that's a great question. Um, I want to say it was kind of natural. Um, it was kind of like she saw me. It was like kind of like she saw me um, what I really liked and what I really fall in love with as far as my creativity. And, you know, when it comes to doing the videography and the, the streaming and things like that, she she saw immediately what my loves are you know what i'm saying yeah. and it, she just naturally was able to support me you know what i'm saying and it which was what i thought was really cool was that it inspired her to mm, branch to out yeah it inspired her to kind of you know create her own um create her own hobbies and create her own things that she can be creative with especially with her makeup she's a yeah. She's a whiz with her makeup and she hasn't even been doing it that long, but she's crazy. She's amazing with it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Um, so but like yeah. I helped her create her own 
creative identity in a sense. Exactly. And I love it. You know what I'm saying? I feel like that's with any, it, it's not even just marriage, you know what I'm saying? With just relationships in general, you know what I'm saying? With you, even with your girl, you know what I'm saying? I feel yeah. like you gotta, gotta inspire each other. You know what I'm saying? I feel like just feed off of each other. And I, I feel like that's, that's really key. This, this episode for everybody that's watching, it's kind of like a beginnings and origins episode. So I kind of wanted to give all of us a chance to like, explain what we do as far as like our career paths well first how we met and then how we grown up to be the men we are today so it sounds like a long episode uh, <laughs> <laughs> we sure. we're, gonna, uh, we're not gonna make it a, a Zack snyder cut <laughs> um so i guess we'll start with uh rashawn and i we we met like Man. A brick ago, bro. Yeah. I probably moved to the new to that neighborhood of when I was probably three. Yeah, yeah, you were definitely there before me for sure. Yeah. And then I Rashawn, how old were you when you came to that neighborhood? I was I think I had just turned seven. I had just turned seven. So it was like the fall of that year. I had just it was either I had just turned six or I had just turned seven. Okay. Um but yeah, it sounds crazy. Yeah, I remember I, I was I was low key reminiscing uh, randomly the other day about uh, some of those times. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But um, yeah. So yeah, Rashawn and I we met with a, a couple of our other neighbors. Um, that, you know, we grew up playing together and stuff like that. And then when I think when I was about sixth grade, right, Devin and Adrian, is when y'all came to the neighborhood. Um, so, yeah. How how do we meet? I always try to remember. It's like do we meet at the bus stop? It's fuzzy, bro. It's fuzzy. It is you fuzzy. And a, you and I had classes. Okay, that's how I met yeah. you. Okay. So, yeah, that's probably how it started. That's probably how it started. So, we all rode the same bus and stuff like that. Yeah. You know, me and Devin was hanging out. We was always together and stuff. And then. We recognized it. We knew you, and then I, I recognized we was in the same classes. So I yeah. think we talked. We probably talked from seeing each other on the bus, and then you was in my class. Right, you right. Know? So you. Right, you know what's funny though, bro? Like where we where we met, where we lived at the neighborhood, bro. Like most people who ever come visit always say the same. It's dark. It's dark out there. Like there's no lights. Like you know. Yeah. It's, so like when we first moved there, we I guess we didn't notice, but you know. It was dry dark. So, like, for the first few days and, and weeks of moving there, like, we didn't know who y'all were. Like, we just knew there was <laughs> That's people. True. That's true. And, like, we didn't see no faces until, because, you know, because it was fall when you start going to school. Right. And then the the season is changing. So, you know, it's dark early in the morning. So, yeah. 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 That's true. We didn't know who y'all were. We was like, oh, okay. Well, this is, and then, you know, so like it started to get spring and so you wear less clothes, less hoodies and stuff. So, you know, you hang outside a little longer. So, yeah, it was, it's, it was all fuzzy in a sense. Yeah. But uh, I think we did all eventually start just like hanging out from like, I guess, after school. Yeah. Long story short, we kind of just formed our brothership or brotherhood. Um, and then we, we've been boys for like, yeah. After sixth grade, it was a wrap, bro. Yeah. After, after like, I think because we got cool, like, it was it, really it didn't like, take long. Yeah, it didn't take long. And during that summer, so yeah. yeah after that, we just like. So, Sean, you was about to graduate then. Yeah, I was about to graduate. That's when we used to. Uh, I used to ask. I used to ask. Uh, I used to be too afraid to come ask y'all to play outside. Actually, <laughs> I used to tell Tony to do it. I asked <laughs> Tony to do it. <laughs> yeah, I think I think we started middle school. Rashawn was a. Uh, you were a freshman or, or sophomore? Yeah, I was a sophomore, I believe. Yeah, yeah. So you yeah. just graduated middle school. Um, but yeah, we. How, how long was that ago? Sixth grade. It had to be 15 years plus. We've been boys 15 years plus. Let's say that. Yeah. Oof. Um, it's a brick, bro. Been, been through some ups and downs. We need a cowbell for that. Fatigue. You know what I'm Plus saying? Yeah, go ahead, Tony. Like, hit that yeah. bell real quick one time. <laughs> hit that joint. So there you go. <laughs> one time. One. Right now, my professional career, uh, or for construction company. Um, what did you go to school for? 
Well, school, I studied architecture. So I started out uh, doing electrical engineering and then switched majors like uh, through my, my mid-college career, I guess. Um, it went to architecture. So um, my background is in architecture. Um, uh, as far as work, though, uh, professionally right now, I am somewhat of a project estimator. So I work in construction field, do a lot of uh, estimating projects, renovations, additions. Um, the company I'm with right now is a black owned business in Washington, Dope. DC. Uh, general contract is coming up, you know what I'm saying? So they're transform, they're transcending into the larger uh, general contract in space. Uh, so there'll definitely be a, a, a force to be reckoned with and a, a name coming up soon. So the design aspect has definitely changed for me. And that's what I'm trying to get back into. I'm um, trying to find where exactly I can provide my own um, unique services to my company that's, that's uh, you know, valuable, but um, at the same time, uh, valuable in the aspect of valuable for me as an experience mm -hmm. and then valuable for the company as in it can be uh, equivalent to, you know, income for the company. Yeah. I'm just, it's just trying to find that balance, you know, yeah. I'm trying to find that balance where, where my skills fit in necessarily uh, to what we're doing, but the design part, Yeah, the, the design part, I really, really uh, want to get back to. Because at school, I did, we did a lot of design work. Right. Um, we did a lot of presentations, you know, on a weekly basis. Mm -hmm. uh, you, you got progress uh, pinups. You're doing at least four or five small projects on top of, you know, like your main project. Right. So it goes from the computer stuff. It goes from the drafting stuff. It goes to actual tangible, you know, physical models and stuff like that. So that part I don't have right now yeah. um, in my everyday. I do get to touch on it every now and then as far as uh, uh, some design tenant fit out type situations. You know, you might have a, uh, a company who wants a certain layout mm -hmm. or, um, but that's, that's kind of as far as it goes. Um, like, yeah, us, just uh, tell us, um, you like your college, start off with your college career. Uh, okay. For school, for me, like, it's a little bit different. Um, I guess my background and my discipline of study is electrical engineering. Um, like a minor in like computer engineering. So some, some computer, uh, engineering and processing, but, um, not too heavy in the coding, I guess. Mm. But, um, uh, for me, I think it just is, it's, um, I would call myself a continuing student forever. Yeah. Like, you know, you know, looking to try to learn something. Um, I started my college career after high school in electrical and I, um, took a break due to like, you know, just where I was in my life at that point and other stuff. So, when I came back to school and uh, um, when I came back to school, it was just like being a different person. I was still growing and still learning and stuff. So I think that's when I really started to realize that I can like engage into my creative side more so. And um, I did a lot more entrepreneuring like during the time that I wasn't in school more than anything. So, um, I'm about to graduate come, uh, June at the end of July this year. And oh, I probably, I probably just do, um, something like at a manufacturing, uh, a manufacturing company for, uh, automotives or any type of like motors or something like that. Yeah. Uh, in so, the meantime, like I still, I still think that uh, my end game is gonna be um, 
uh, a, a, a entrepreneur a career. It won't be like, you know, working for someone else. Nothing wrong with that. And, and nothing wrong with that, you know? Yeah, man. man. I, I'm so. with you a thousand percent on that. I'm with you. So what yeah. would be the most like, I guess, creative aspect of, like you say, engineering and coding, right? Mm-hmm. Um, what would you say? What would you think is the most creative aspect? Um, right now, it's just the the interaction, how well you can interact with the machine or how well you can program a machine to, to read things without having to tell it everything. So mm-hmm. that's that's the biggest wave right now. And a lot of machine learning and AI uh, programs or or you know, infrastructures is built on those pro- that, that programming yeah. are the future. So like just the face recognition when you lift your phone up or that there's a sensor that can detect and know when to detect, it sends that signal back that there's a hand close enough that it's going to illuminate the phone screen to get ready to unlock itself. So those little features, even the face unlock, those things um, make, you know, make, you know, using tech like way more convenient. So yeah. AI is definitely the future. So that's always oh, no doubt, changing. No and doubt. it's no limits almost. Yeah. Like, yeah. To you too. Man. That's that's dope that you're in that you're into that, man. I I think I feel like that all that is amazing. So in college, I originally went to college for i thought i wanted to do video game designing i wanted to do that initially so i was like Yo, I remember right. you were heavy on doing that too bro mm-hmm. i was i was i wanted to do it so i was like all right they have it so i have to do computer science so i was like okay cool i'm gonna do the computer science thing but i got to this class that like i just couldn't get past bro so i said all right i'm gonna have to switch and i ended up doing computer information systems instead. So I switched my major. So that's what I ended up graduating with. Um, and I've been I've been doing tech jobs for oof, since I was in high school. So I currently work for a tech company, currently um, doing this admin work, I would say. Uh, not too much coding, you know what I'm saying? More like application systems monitoring monitoring stuff yeah. like that so that's my nine to five you know what i'm saying that's that's not my career that's my nine to five you know what i'm saying my yeah. career i feel like is um what's going to be you know what i do for the long run is uh film and film and production um i really i've been doing that for about almost 10 years not 10 years i've been doing that for um yeah nah i've been doing because i've been doing youtube for yeah, about seven, seven years or close to 10. I, I, I keep saying about 10, but um, yeah, I've been doing this for about seven years, man. And I I love it. I mean, I started off doing YouTube and stuff like that, but I, I then I started experimenting. I started doing trailers, like movie trailers, music videos. And I'm like, yo, I love this. You know what yeah, I'm saying? Yeah. I love doing this. I love being, I love being a director. I love being behind the scenes, you know, acting, I mean, acting and being in the, in the stuff in right. the productions is cool, but I love being behind the camera and being able to, um, you know, just have control of how everything is, is seen and how the finished product looks, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, Yeah. Nice, man. Yeah, I'm, I'm definitely like I'm, I'm glad that you're coming into your uh, your visual director uh, era. So man, appreciate it, man. It, I had like an awakening, and I was like, yeah. yo, I, I I'm really good at tech work. I am really good at it, yeah. but it's not like a passion, you know? Right. It's right. not. A, it's not like my 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 heart's in it but it's it's not like a super like a passion i'm just really really good at it you know what i'm saying yeah it's not fueling your fire yeah it's not you know yeah all right Uh, i guess i'll go into mine next um i guess i I kind of took took the route route of going like like straight straight creative creative. uh through my college career i went to the art institute and I just majored in photography. 
Um, but even there, they kind of give you like a lot of different skill sets. So like uh, we worked on video stuff or like graphic stuff. Um, and I, to me, I don't, I don't know. I, I didn't really find an interest in doing anything else but making art. Um, so after that, after I graduated, um, can you still hear me? Yeah. Yep. Okay. See, after I graduated, um, I kind of went to this whole space of uh, working for a corporate. So like finding different creative corporate jobs, right? And I didn't really, I didn't really know the extent of creative corporate until I got into like uh, TV entertainment, right? Mm -hmm. um, so from there, I kind of felt, uh, you know, being a corporate creative can give you a little security as far as being creative. Cause you know, it's, being a creative is either you doing it in corporate or you're freelancing, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, and sometimes freelancers doesn't freelance jobs or freelance roles doesn't always give you that security that you probably would want to make you facts. So sometimes you got to get uncomfortable in freelance. But um, so yeah, I I just started doing different jobs for different corporations as as far as a photographer. Uh, mm -hmm. I did some like product photography. Uh, did some like car photography. I don't think I ever told anybody, but I used to work at uh, Easter Motors doing car photography. Oh, <laughs> so, words, so, so you guys sent some of your pictures. I so. hated that job. <laughs> words. <laughs> It, it was it was like about a half a year, yeah. yeah. Um, I was surprised had, when you told me that. But yeah. I was like, man, he probably out there making everything like tough. <laughs> yeah, that's just um, something, yeah. But yeah, I always, I always found it interesting to be a, a corporate creative. Um, so yeah, that's. Did you that's, ever feel like? Did you ever feel like you were, you know, what I'm saying, you were constricted? You know what I'm saying with your creativity during doing oh, yeah. some of those corporate jobs? You know. Yeah. Um, I'll say, what, well, one of the jobs I felt was, of course, when you do product photography for different corporations, that they have their own standard uh, image of what they want to put out to the market, rightfully so. Yeah. Um, so when I got into a, um, like a fashion product photography uh, corporate job, whatever, uh, I, I thought I was able to implement some more of my creativity or like my creative touch to it, but Again, they have their own their own look. So, yeah, this there's, there's been a lot of times where I want to, um, you know, input my creative touch, but I just can't. Or sometimes they they might let you, you know, do a little bit here and there, but for the most part, it's it's their image. They they tell you what to do. Where? Yeah. Um, all right. So, so I kind of do like some high, like probably do like a high. Of your mental health and do like a low. Does that make sense? So like, give me a yeah. time where you know you might you might not have felt the best, um, and then give me a time where you know you were on a a mental high for a little bit. Um, uh, Dev, you want to go? You want to go yeah. first? Yeah, yeah. Um, honestly, bro, the funny thing is right. A couple of weeks ago, right? I just felt like mad moody. Like, I don't even know why. And I just was like, I don't know. I didn't, I mean, it was a couple, probably two weeks ago and it was just rainy. I don't know if it was like rainy for everybody. I think it was rainy most, most part, you know, just, and I mean, I think it might've been some other things probably affecting me and I just didn't understand like why I felt that way, but I didn't have no explanation. So I really couldn't say that I felt moody. Like I just yeah. didn't feel like me. That's yeah, like, yeah, man. that's just, that's just the feeling. Right. And so I called it what it was. Right. And so I was telling, I was telling my girl, we was talking and stuff and, you know, um, honestly, she just was just listening. And then eventually she was like, she was like, I understand. And I know, you know, I wish I could do more and all these things, but she was just saying she understood and it's, it's okay to feel that way, I guess, yeah. but more so the fact that she just was saying that she know what I mean, or like, you know, 
she get that. And after that, it was like, well, you just have that listening ear as somebody who cares. And so mm-hmm. I think that that was just all I kind of I think needed to hear to mm-hmm. to feel to feel like at take the edge off, I guess, a little bit. But yeah. um I think I think maybe it was just the things you're going through that make you feel a certain way and like you're just trying to keep it contained or whatever. Yeah. And yeah, I guess you're not getting enough highs to lift that low and you just probably feel a little bit overweighted with it. So I guess a couple of weeks went by um, and yeah, I started to feel a lot better, man. The weather's been better too. Yeah. And um, thankfully. <laughs> so the weather can play a big part. Yeah, yeah, man, for real. For real. Yeah. Yeah, I think it's if some of your escape have to do with like leaving the confinement in your house at the end of the work day and stuff. So when the weather's not too good, you know, you kind of gotta just sit with that one and you can't go outside. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> or yeah. So Okay. Um, did you have like a high or anything that you want to talk about? Um any any good moment? Or just just this has been smooth sailing kind of ever since. Oh yeah, just last last weekend was pretty good. Um I uh I got to go to the gun range and stuff and just hang out and uh let off some steam. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's that's always that's fun. What's up. Hey, you gotta do what you gotta do to let that <laughs> steam off, bro, for real. Yeah, no, I feel you. Yeah, but um eating better too. I mean, not just saying eating better, but like Eating better is always a, a a a push or like a um a try for me. Like, but I'm saying eating to the point where maybe you are eating some of the things you want to eat, or just you know, yeah. just making yourself feel better. So, eating multiple times a day, you know, don't starve yourself. Yeah. <laughs> um, no man, I, going back to your you're low like I honestly went through the same thing like last week and it's, it's it started on on Monday and I couldn't mm. figure out what it was like why am I feeling so moody or so down and by the end of the week I kind of realized that um this whole week you know with the shootings with the police shootings of like Dante Wright and uh yeah uh, I think his name is uh Adam Toledo or I can't remember his name. Yeah, um, man, I, I couldn't even watch the videos, bro. I was yeah, like, man. yo, I, I couldn't it, even watch them. And it was just very reminiscent of last year when George Floyd passed away, when he was when he was murdered. Um right, right. Yeah, right, right. that whole week I was just trying to figure out what murder. what was causing this feeling. Like I just I felt like uh I was uh hitting that that boiling point again. Mm-hmm. So I, was, I was talking i had that kind of like eureka moment when i was talking to uh, my lady but um sometimes you just gotta even though we can't really escape it sometimes you just gotta step away from like all the media and stuff like that um and just take a break from everything um yeah that was that was kind of my low so i definitely felt what you were what you were going through not to say it was for the same reason but i did felt i did feel moody um, and then my high was <clears throat> um, just working on like a couple different creative projects, trying to keep myself busy. Um, I got something in the works, so it's it's, it's cool to see uh, my creative vision come to to life. So I'll, I'll let y'all know more about that in the future. But or, uh, and, and plus we got this podcast too. You yeah, know what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah, yeah definitely. It's hell definitely. of an idea. This is definitely like something I was looking forward to, so that kind of give me another, you know, another high. So, um, Adrian, what about you? But actually, I was trying to see if I had a, a good low one, you know, that I could recall. Yeah, I mean, something that's happened recently. Um, and then your lows don't always got to be on yep. ten, you know. Everybody yeah, has different lows. They don't got to be, you know, intense. Yeah. Um, I th- I think I say that my low is, uh, well, at least recently, has been getting my my own stuff, my own, my own things established for um, my own personal development, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So whether it's uh, 
by Damn, we're gonna have to... were you kind of like beating yourself up that you're not there yet or yeah so it was coupled with a, a few things mm -hmm. um so right now i'll just talk about uh just make it you know really specific to the last few weeks okay um so i got a bunch of things um equipment desks computer items and all those kind of things to get myself uh, set up with the workstation in my basement okay so for the past couple of weeks you know whether it be work you know other plans stuff comes up um just you know stuff gets pushed back so getting my own time to get that stuff handled you know and progress with uh, setting everything up to get me to a new stage where I can now produce, yeah. you know, yeah. um, my artistry is very, 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 very satisfying. Mm. So a lot of this is going to be uh, for my own artistry and the other half will be uh, for my professional career uh, as well. So, yeah, I say the, I just say the low is, the procrastination mm. or the complacency. So coming to realize, like coming face to face with your procrastination. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. And yeah. then just, you know, over overcoming that. No, man, once you, once you come to face with your procrastination, it's a lot of things get easier after that. Like once you get over that hump of just doing. Yeah, sure. Um, but no, that's good. You got to invest. And the thing that's crippling a lot, I believe is like, you're beating yourself up for the procrastination. Um, Oof, man, who are you telling, bro? Uh, but what's really crippling about it, um, which can be crippling, um, is the fact that you're aware mm. of it. You know, so the awareness plays a a, a big a big factor in, in all of that. Once you get to the, to the end goal, because. Um, once you're aware of the crippling, that's when it's even more, that's when it's even more damaging, you know, yeah. because it's like, I'm doing this intentionally, but not really intentionally, you know, it's my subconscious, mm -hmm. but I'm aware that I'm doing this and it's not really in my best interest to get to the end goal. Yes. Yeah, it's it's so, like it's a self-inflicted wound. Kinda. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. No, I feel so that. just, just over, overcoming that, um, getting, getting, getting past that. Yeah, that's what's probably the most satisfying over the, the highs and lows of mine. Right. Like I said, I mean, once you get over that hump, you feel a lot better about yourself and then you're actually moving forward in like your purpose. So yeah. I'll say one yeah, thing man. that just you got to continuously, you know, stay conscious of the right. fact that I'm aware I'm making that wrong decision. Right. And even though even though like, like let's say you make that decision again. You still gotta keep on coming back to it and facing. It. It's like, bro, how many times are you gonna make it? Oh yeah, accountability. You know? Accountability is a hundred percent. Self accountability too. <laughs> what? What? Yeah, no, that's that's good. That's good little little tidbit. Um, hey, Sean, what about you? All right, highs and lows. Just one I high, one say. low. One high, one low. Okay, man. All right, I would say my low depression man um during this time i definitely dealt with depression and i i thought i had defeated that beast mm -hmm. a long time ago because I, I actually had that had a you know uh a bit of a breakdown in college you know what i'm saying but you know i thought i had beat that beast back then but uh it's crazy how like how covid makes you sit and sit with yourself you know what yeah. i'm saying sit yeah. with your own thoughts and everything you know what i'm saying and uh, yeah, has had I was dealing with uh, was dealing with a, a bit of uh, some demons from the past. Some, I guess you can say if you want to say demons, I would just say stuff from the past. I guess. Yeah. Um. Yeah, man, dealing with trauma. I, I was dealing with trauma. You know what I'm saying? And that I had like a trigger, and that you know triggered some depression, man. And mm. uh, had to, dude, I had to get some therapy and everything. I still, I'm still doing therapy currently. Okay. Um, been been trying to you know consistently do that, but uh, yeah. I was just yeah, about to man. ask, how do you um, how do you cope with that, or how do you get through that? And therapy is good for sure. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Therapy definitely helps. You know what I'm saying? Um, that's probably like uh, a, definitely a great source. But as far as me coping, 
um, you know, keeping myself busy, you know, and I can, well, not necessarily keeping myself busy, doing things that I really want to do. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Um, which would lead to my high with COVID. Um, I feel like my creative juices, like I feel like they've been, like in the beginning, I was, I felt bad, like, just like you guys. It's funny how you guys were saying some of the similar things that I was, I've been feeling, you know, I was feeling bad because I was like, man, I got this time. I should be going crazy. I should be like doing mad shoots and stuff. I should be doing shooting mad videos. I should be doing a bunch of stuff right now, putting out mad content and everything. Right. But um, I don't know, man, I was having roadblocks, man. I was having blocks and stuff, but um the 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 great thing was that uh a lot of my i came up with a lot of creative ideas um and i've been able to i've been able to accept the fact that you know sometimes i do need a break i i need to take a break from i need to take a break from things you know what i'm saying yeah um and that actually helped in the beginning cuz i in the beginning like i said i wanted i felt like i wanted i needed to put out content and do a bunch of stuff because everything shut down but mm. <clears throat> i actually had to tell myself I was like yeah you need to take a break from take a break from doing the stuff take a break and just sit back and actually fall in love with doing it again doing it yeah. doing I'm, all this stuff i'm again. a big advocate of stepping away and taking a break bro especially bro, when I, you've been a creative for so long yes bro you need yes, to bro. step away like you have yeah to. man I, I learned that the hard way, bro. And that was like the greatest thing that I ever did. Cause I found like a new love for, you know, a new love for, you know, film and production, you know what I'm yeah. saying? And, and thankfully I've been able to do that during COVID, you know, and I think, and now I'm, I'm firing at all cylinders right now, man. Like we, we just, just last weekend, we shot um, a short film last weekend, downtown Raleigh. Um, at this beautiful apartment that looks like out at the uh, at the at the city, you know what I'm saying? So you yeah, can see yeah. all the all the buildings and stuff at night. That's fire, cool. bro! Freaking fire! So we just shot that last weekend, and I got another joint that I'm still finishing, putting the little, you know, Salt Bay, the little finishing touches. You know what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah. Salt Bay finishing but, touches. That's the one you've been uh, promoting <laughs> lately, right? Yeah, yeah. So I'm putting the finishing touches on that joint, and we're we're trying to drop that um before this month is out it's april right yeah so before this month is out <laughs> we're trying to drop that joint so yeah man the high would definitely be like i like being able to step away and find a new love for a passion that i already had you know what i'm saying yeah i feel like that was that's probably my biggest high and been that, and that allowed me to you know put more energy into well, that that allowed me to that allowed me to well, let me let me start over. <laughs> that you know um, contributed to my happiness. You know what I'm mm-hmm. saying, which gave me more energy to do things with my wife, do things with you know my stepdaughter. You know what I'm saying, and my family in general. You know, yeah. yeah. Um, so take a break, everybody. Yes. Don't feel yeah. bad, please. Please don't feel bad for taking a break take a break when you need to especially when you feel like you hit a block you just that means you need to take a break yeah it's, it's always good to reset like the world isn't going nowhere granted you don't want to stay still um yeah. but yeah it's it's always good to step away reset and uh Evaluate. yeah sure, yeah man. Tell you stuff. your mind will tell you stuff about yourself you know? your Yo, listen to your body, your body bro listen all, to your body bro it's all one tool man you got to cultivate that like facts it'll it'll be okay once you step away a little bit you can like rejuvenate your mind and that creative it, it, it's gonna come back tenfold so what i mean especially like when you like the taking care of your body part is i, I feel like that i mean it, it gets talked about a lot you know what i'm saying but i feel like especially when it comes to eating right that's important bro because you eating and drinking right can give you the all the energy in the world that you need to do what you need to do you know what right. i'm saying yeah when working out and exercising and all that good stuff but yeah, yeah i'm rambling oh good um all right so trying to 
put something light or funny into it or, or just in general, did anything like interesting happen to y'all during this whole COVID year? Like anything crazy, anything wild? I got, I got a story for y'all. Yeah, go ahead. Let's hear your story while I think of something. Cause I'm trying I actually to think. Got, I got two stories, right? Oh shoot. So one is one is kind of like painful, traumatizing, but um, <laughs> I lost a tooth during COVID. Oh damn. Oh shoot, bro. You lost it. So it was so yeah, crazy. man. I was working from home. You know, I was firing up some nice turkey burgers. This was I was in California, right? Right. You know, some mean, some mean turkey burgers. Say, don't tell me a tooth came out in the burger. No, no, no. no. Uh, so was I was sad. making some some fries, some turkey burgers, and I had this burger seasoning, right? Yeah. Um, and sometimes these burger seasonings they come with a bit more larger seasoning rocks. Oh than yeah. Like your typical grind it up seasoning. So I'm I'm chewing, I'm munching down, and I I bit down one time, and I felt this shock like go through my whole body and like it's pain and i'm like Yikes. all right maybe just a, just a regular like a bit bit down on something wrong it, it, the pain will go away so i try to take another bite and then i there was that pain again so i go <laughs> in the mirror and i look and I'm, I'm looking around like i don't see any crack or anything so i'm like all right maybe i'm just tripping but then i start moving my tooth and my tooth was split down right in the middle like a oh, hairline, son. hairline crack. Oh, son. So like, that's just bro. I'm working from home. I I can't get a break <laughs> right now. My tooth is about to come out. Son, no. So yeah, that was like. So you could see it's. Split. I could see the split. Crazy, crazy story. Wow. Um. So yeah, long. So story. what was it that you bit in, bit into? So you know, like it was a seasoning rock. Like you know, when you uh, like when you tenderize your meat, right? And you you put the season on it, you just kind of beat the season into it. Um, so they oh so man, they didn't pay attention to that. Bro. I guess not. Some some seasons like some burger seasons because you know they had the bigger holes for some yeah some seasons. So it just came like that. But yeah, I was I was pissed that my tooth was cracked and I had to go to the dentist to get it pulled out. What? Um, so you definitely the, got the same day situation or this this yeah. took probably a couple days because. Keep in mind, this is during COVID hours, so not every dentist is open. Yeah, um, I cracked two for a couple of days. Couple of days, man. So I had to go. I'm all the way in Oxnard, and I had to drive to LA. It was like an hour away because this dentist is open. So I remember I had to drive back after they pulled my tooth. Like I just wanted to lay down. Like I had to drive for an hour. Hold on, bro. You ain't supposed to be driving after you. You getting? Upgraded. No, my man was <laughs> driving, bro. <laughs> Luckily, they didn't. They didn't put no anesthesia. They just put the. Uh, Oh, no, oh, the numb, the numb yeah. stuff. Okay. He was, stuck in. he was like, <laughs> "Yeah, man, he's stuck in it." Let's out. go. We got, <laughs> we got places to be. I had that Frank Ocean, not that, that Nova King. <laughs> um, so yeah, that's that's one crazy story. And then this other story happened like in August. So, um, I almost, well, I don't want to say I almost lost my life, but I could have got into some like crazy crazy situation so i'm i'm in silver spring right and this is like in a town center it's probably eight o'clock at night um i'm meeting up with uh with my lady like this is when she came out to visit mm -hmm. so i'm going to see her and i need to stop by cbs to get something mm -hmm. so in this town center there's um You know everything is everything is pretty dim. You know there's not too many people on the street because again it's COVID. Um, so to to get to the CVS, I park on the street and I have to go around a corner. And at this corner, there's no lights, right? So there's this guy standing at the end of this corner. So I'm walking and I see this guy standing at the end of the corner, and I see two two ladies walk across the street, right? So they're walking ahead of. They're probably like. 50 feet ahead of me. And once these two ladies walking the dogs past this guy that's standing at the corner, mm -hmm. he starts getting, he starts asking the questions like, and he starts pushing up on them. Like, you gotta, like, y'all got any mace? Y'all got any, you know, he was just real. Aggressive. Like, he was super aggressive. Like, he was about to do something to him. So I'm like, I it's two going, women. It's two women and a dog, you say? Two women and two dogs, like two short white women. Mm. 
mm-hmm. like kind of kind of chubby. Mm-hmm. Um, so he starts he starts reaching in his pocket like y'all got mace on you, y'all got what y'all got on you, like oh shoot, yeah. So I'm like, oh shoot, man, son. Why, why do I gotta come encounter that? This particular time it has to be me. Yeah. So of course I had to say something. I'm just not gonna let you know something bad happen in front of my face and not and me not do nothing. Yeah. So I'm like. I start going off at the mouth like, yo, what the F are you doing? Like, back the F up. I was, you know, I was being super, super aggressive to- towards him. Mm-hmm. So he turns his direction towards me while the other two ladies scurry off. Like, oh my God, like they just, they run mm-hmm. off. So he, tar- he starts turning towards me, reaching in his pocket and like, what's up, you got a gun on you? Like, what, you got a knife on you? So I'm like, come and find out. <laughs> And I, I'm, yeah. ready, I'm ready to start. You know, I'm ready. So you ready to start? Yeah. You ready Especially, to... you know, I just I just was hitting on the bag earlier the early day. I was like, oh, yes. Oh, you was, uh, you was ready, son. Was you was ready. ready. <laughs> but the only thing that caught me, he was start reaching his pocket. Like, he was he was about to grab something. Um, so that's when my fight or flight kicked in. Like, I do want to fight, but I don't know what he has in his pocket. So I had to be smart. Facts. So I had to... Um, Man, if if I could run another four four or four two, <laughs> so you was out of this. And all this um, this whole time, I'm reaching into my my phone, my uh, my pocket to call my, you know to call the police. So yeah, I'm, I'm debating on like, do I want to call the police or not? Which is crazy. Yeah, that can yeah. make things yeah make a break like ten so, times worse, bro. I'm talking to Facts. police, and she was like, I'm telling so, what's going on. And she was like, "You want to? You want to stay around for the police to come?" I'm like, "Nope, I'm about to go right now." Hold <laughs> <laughs> uh, on. So basically, run, run it back real quick for me. So yeah. this happens, and then fight or flight kicks in, and you're like, "All right, we're not about to have this situation. I gotta go." Like, I'm, I'm, I'm dipping. So, so dude's like reaching. He's like, "What's up?" And he's like, All right. was, "He's asking me like, you got what you got? A, you got a gun on you? You got a knife?" He's asking me this, and I'm like, "Yeah, come find out." So I'm about to. I'm, I'm starting to like. You know, yeah. either defend yeah. myself or I'm gonna run. Yeah. And because I thought about all right, if this guy really has a gun or a knife, you know, he could I mean I could probably sustain some stab wounds, but I ain't trying to get stabbed up, especially know, if yeah. I'm trying to see my girl, you know. Yeah, kind of live. Yeah, yeah, you know what I'm saying? saying? <laughs> you know, like, What's your life? Get bro. all the hard stuff, man. Everybody gonna be have their yeah. own opinions about it should have went woo woo woo, but right. no. but at the end of the day, you're trying to be alive, you know what yeah. I'm saying? Live, I, my I nigga. got no shame, bro. Like if Facts. I can fight it, I'm gonna fight it. But if I can't, I can't. Yeah. Um, it's it's a blessing and it's very fortunate that not to happen it to those women out there and you was around to yeah, yeah. you know be the man you were that night. You know what yeah, I'm saying? Yeah. He was, he was oh, definitely awesome. Yeah. You kind of question your your own uh not I wouldn't say morality, but somewhat of your your own integrity. Does this yeah. make me the person that my values yeah. say I am? You know yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah. Facts. Yeah. Yeah, I had um I, I didn't have a situation. I had a situation that was kind of similar, but it was it was a little it was weird, I guess. I guess as you can say. Um yeah, so I just went to um I was just driving around in Durham. Oh yeah, okay. Well I didn't, I didn't say the city now. I was just oh. driving around. <laughs> oh. I was just driving around Durham, you know what I'm saying? I went to go, you know meet up with one of my bros at um gas station or whatever because mm-hmm. I, I think i had left some equipment at my man's house so i so i met him at the gas station to go pick up my equipment got my equipment pulled over at the parking lot of whatever i can't was it a hardy's pulled over in the parking lot of a hardy's random hardy's just to you know because i think my mom's was calling me and i was trying to facetime her so I just was like, all right, let me pull over in this parking lot, FaceTime my mom real quick, sit here, you know, talk to her. Why, after I finished FaceTime moms, there was a car that pulls up and like rolls down the window. And my man just starts bussing. He starts bussing at bussing at a car in the drive-thru. Oh no! <laughs> right, it, it was like, bro, it was like uh, I was watching Baby Boy when Snoop yeah, Dogg, yeah, yeah. Snoop Dogg rolled down the window, or whatever. Bro, yeah, son, it was like that. My man's rolled down the window. All you heard was, "Are you?" Saw, I, and I saw it too, bro. I think that's yeah. what would trip me out. It was like I, I was close, so it was like, 
it's probably not as close as you guys are, but I was in my car and it was literally like not like maybe like less than a hundred feet away from me. And um, yeah, pulled out the joint, start busting out the car in the drive through, and I was like, "Yo!" And I was like, "Do I?" I, I was a little on, shook, you yo. That the dude is busting out the car into the Hardys. No, no, he he was he he's busting at another car in the drive in the drive through. Oh, That's wow, wow. Yeah, man. Dang. And um, he he did like four shots and then peeled off or whatever. And um, me and this other car, and this lady, this black lady, we had saw everything. She was like, she was like, were they just, were they just shooting? And I was like, I looked at her, I was like, yeah. And she, I guess she got on the phone to call the cops. I was, see me, I was trying to figure out, I had the same moment tone. I was like, should I call the cops? But I was like, nah, I don't know if I want to be here yeah. when they show up. Nope. Yeah. So I actually, I got the F up out of there, yo. I peeled off. I, I got about that parking lot. I was like, all right, I'm going home, dog. Going yeah, we, home. When you think about it, it's, it's such a crazy, like, debate to have within yourself to call the cops or not. Because they, you know, they're supposed to hear, they're supposed to be here to protect us. But, of course, that's not what we're saying every day. They, they're they killing us. So I was like, yep. are going to be aggressive towards me when I'm the ones calling you? Because it's because of color of my skin. Yeah. yeah. Um. So, yeah, man, it's just... It's just hard to to come to terms like who do I call in this situation. I mean, I think that my bad. Yeah, I think that most people most people like understand that. Like, do you want to be? You know what you were in the situation, but right. do you want to be the witness in the situation? So, like with your situation tone, like you know you. You were a witness, but then could have easily became the victim right. of a situation. And then, or he could have became a victim. Adrian, you in the same situation too. Like, you know, say you caught the guy or whatever, then then what? And right. all those kind right. of things. So the that's, story that's the first thing to ride through my mind. Yeah. The story, the story is gonna continue whether you're the hero or not. The story is gonna continue, like whether you know you were successful in like being being uh you know, help that day. Right, right. If you, if you, so then that's why it always comes down to the debate. Like, do you even want to call the cops? Do you want to be there? Do you, are you the one to, 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 um, be there to wait for the, everything to unfold right. for the law and stuff? So I understand that. That's crazy. Yeah, man. But even to like, to an extent, like back in time, like, depending on where you are, like Adrian said, and whatever crime is going on, like you don't want to be a witness because you know you don't want nobody to come do nothing to you or your family because you know you saw something and they know yeah. you saw this or whatever. So like, bro, yeah. you feel me? Watch it's, too much TV, man. Law and Order and everything, bro. Come on now. Yeah, it's a lot of layers to it, man. A lot of layers, bro. And yeah, we don't have that. Um, we don't have that luxury of like you know, calling the police and first they have quick response time and then they're not um, asking if it was us that did it. Like, Especially because we black, man. Exactly. Especially, bro. Exactly. Yeah. So. Yeah, if you're responding to a crime, like this is all that they know uh, prior to arriving on scene. Like, right. you know, you don't know if you want to wait for that. Exactly. So, yeah, man, that was my, that was my, uh, two of my wild moments in the COVID COVID year so far. Definitely got to keep that segment, though. I, <laughs> I mess with that, you know. The tough situations, right. but, like, I'm, I'm just thinking about the fact that you brought that up, and I'm like, bro, I've got at least got some stories. a handful of stories that, that have never been heard only by me. <laughs> yeah. And, so. I, and for some reason, I I kept that to myself. Um, one, because I didn't want to scare anybody, especially my parents. Like, I didn't Facts. want them to, to worry. Um, and then... I wanted to save it for this for this first episode too. So that was another thing. But yeah. Dope. I, I feel like um at least with your close uh, your, your close circle, you gotta you gotta tell somebody oh, some yeah. capacity about your near-death experiences because it's super helpful. Yeah. You know, this yeah, might thanks. not be the platform to speak about uh some things, but yeah, when it comes to uh just carrying your mental health and uh 
and getting yourself together. Like yeah. I've had my own share and I'm pretty sure you guys are the same. Um, I think in my life, I want to say I've had at least three to four mm. times where I feel like they were near death experiences. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, whether if it was between altercation with someone else or vehicle, mm. I've been in car accidents. Yeah. I've at least three. And I, those aren't even only one of those is a situation I'm talking about. Yeah. But yeah. Yeah, man. We, I mean, we definitely got to, that'd be cool. We just tell our stories, uh, in certain segments. So keep that in mind for sure. Um, uh, did anybody else have any wild moments during this whole COVID year or any been... wild ones? I don't think I had any wild, any funny ones. Y'all been smooth sailing throughout this whole thing. Oof. I, oof. <laughs> I was, well, yeah, I, guess, I don't know. I guess you could say that. <laughs> <laughs> um, but all right. Uh, like I said, if you have any questions, um, if you have any scenarios, if you want any advice as far as like creativity or anything, um just hit us up and we'll like we'll address them on the show um adrian tell us like any any projects you got going on what's your instagram plug where people can follow you at uh right now all my stuff is pretty much under construction um i'm doing some it's working on myself and businesses yeah so after uh got that a little bit more solidified i give you i think i give you all the information Okay. Where's, where can they follow you on Instagram? Um, at the one and only at T H E E O N E underscore O N L Y. All right. Um, Rashawn, what uh, projects you got going on and where can they find you at on Instagram? And you guys can find me at the coolest. Is it underscore the coolest? I can't remember. I think it's underscore the coolest on Instagram. Um, upcoming we have short film the last tier is coming out this month yes that's coming out this month i'm excited for it so yeah man so that's dropping this month i just gotta you know finish doing the salt bay on the joint so that's coming out this your first short film yeah yep first short film which is dope that's exactly why i'm taking my time with this joint man yeah um Yep, so that's coming out. Um, follow me on Twitch too. You know, I do the streaming thing. Oh, yeah. You know, so y'all follow me on t- Twitch at Gaming for Grits. That's G A M I N G. The number four, then Grits. You know what I'm saying? Um, and yeah, yeah. Make sure y'all follow that Instagram though. You know, because I love doing little photo shoots and stuff like that. So catch some dope content on there, man. For sure, for sure. Um, all right, Devin, what about you? Any projects or anything you got coming up? And what's your Instagram? Um, projects. Hmm. We got some stuff cooking. I mean, you know, uh, we do know we got some new equipment in the in the in the booth and stuff. So uh, we're mobile too. So a little bit of, you know, audio might be popping out, little instrumentals and stuff. Um, okay. Uh oh. Um, okay. But we just, you know, we just still working, you know, um, you know, it's grass season, you know, we try and graduate, get our heads, you know, get our heads in the, in the books and, and we don't be in the tunnel for a little bit, you know, grinding it out. But after that, you know, um, we just going to keep things on the, the tunnel. We're going to keep things pushing in the meantime. Uh, outside of that, I'm always just, you, you know, still on Instagram here and there, I guess I'll be <laughs> popping out on Instagram. Uh, my yeah, Instagram handle is uh, at the weekend, um, T H E underscore W E E K N, and the number two underscore the weekend with a number two. Okay, so that's me. Um, I'd be dropping <laughs> some st- Instagram on the weekend. Yeah, only on the weekend, you know, but <laughs> start on Fridays, you know, start your weekend off Friday, you know. Um, you know, put these handles somewhere too because yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. We'll put them at get the a little tricky. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Outside of that, you know, I'd be on Tumblr a little bit, but uh, outside of that, I'm just on Instagram. Tumblr still you, Tom? Uh, yeah. Community still be live. Yeah, yeah. Okay. I've mm-hmm. been I haven't been on Tumblr in a minute, so. My Rashawn will tell you. I still follow Rashawn on Tumblr, so we active uh, <laughs> Tumblrs and stuff. You know, okay. it do it do be live on there sometimes. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? I just be on Instagram and Twitter heavy. Yeah, I don't even think it's about the just like even the the liveliness. 
it's always something happening, just like with almost every uh, social media. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. But the thing is, it's uh, it's different. Yeah, it has its own uniqueness. Yeah, it's yeah, exactly. different from every other platform. So, I think that's why we still on it. At least that's why I know I'm still on the jump. That's true. Same. I feel like it's, it's probably more chill too, more chill, yeah. creative stuff be going on. Right? I think I spend yeah, my yeah. time on Tumblr more so than I even get on my Instagram, just because the content's different. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. It's true, true. Yeah. yeah, Twitter, yeah. Twitter, I go to Twitter for the laughs. Yeah. If I want to go, you know what I'm saying, see what's what's popping, who's who's canceled today or whatever. Right. Whatever oh, the meme is. The meme, the meme is. Oh, man, the meme be crazy. Yeah. Um, yeah. But yeah, um, y'all can follow me on Instagram at the original Tony. Um, yeah. And I got a couple projects going on. Um, but all right, y'all, be safe. Remember, you matter, you're loved. Um, go be creative, you know? We'll see y'all later. Respectfully. Respectfully. Respectfully.